Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and ohio everybody. What is going on? It is Gail right here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Danmachi video. And today, as always, as, as it is on every Thursday, we're here with another anime review, another anime episode review, I should specify. And we're here to talk about Danmachi Season 4, Episode 14, or as you guys can see by your screens right now, Season 4, Part 2, Episode 3. Now, this episode, of course, titled Daphne Loro's Friend, which we'll come on to later in the video. Um, I really liked it. I think this episode was brilliantly handled. I love the pacing. I love the introduction of certain characters. And overall, well done. Absolutely well done. I'm very much excited to be talking about it. But before we get in, of course, be sure to leave a like on the video. It would be greatly appreciated. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. Nearly 70% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. And we're so close to 1,000 subscribers. We need to hit it before Season 4 ends. So I want you guys to be hitting that subscribe button. And of course, leave a comment down below. What are your thoughts on the show as well so far? What do you guys think about this episode? Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get a comment ready or a community post ready in time for me to go over your thoughts and your reactions of the episode but while i'm editing this video there will be a community post going up so be sure to comment on that post so that people know what your thoughts are and stuff like that of course and you can you know copy paste it from whatever you leave a comment down below in this video as well you can do whatever you want um but yeah episode 14 what do i think about it well like I said, I really like the pacing. Again, it's one of those things that I know I don't need to say again and again, but I kind of have to when it comes to Don Machi because Don Machi has never been good at all, to be quite honest, when it comes to the anime in terms of pacing. The pacing has been horrendous. So to see it properly and in well done manner in this season is a pleasure it's honestly a goddamn pleasure and i have to talk about it every single episode you know from the start to finish the way they handled each sequence was brilliant you know the start where we had bell and ryu trying to defend themselves um obviously from the skull sheep of course and we saw a little bit of ryu's past as well in that starting sequence to then them shifting back to the uh, fight against the Amphis Baino. I think it was well done. It was super, super well done. Um, I do have some nitpicks, of course, with the Amphis Baino fight that I want to talk about in just a moment. But uh, let's start off with the start of the uh, episode itself. Let's talk about that real, uh, you know, ba uh, flashback sequence. I, I was about to say backflash sequence, and that doesn't make any sense. But that flashback sequence with Ryu and, of course, her talking to Elise and uh, obviously our first introduction of Elise in the anime and of course her voice actress as well in the anime and I think it's well done I, I really really liked it I really like the way they portrayed uh, Elise the body language that they gave Elise is just what I imagined and that's the more most important thing you know it's very very key is to ensure that when you're you know making the character designs for these uh, new characters that have never been seen before but we have heard about them, we've seen their backstory, be it from the Australia Record storyline from Dan Mimo, or the light novels, or from Volume 14's Little Bits and Bobs we've seen. It's very, very vital to get the body language right in anime format, and I think they nailed it absolutely when it came to Elise. That sort of friendly but superior vibe that she gives is brilliant, in my personal opinion. And it's something that they did a great job in. And of course, the voice actress, I mean, I've, I've, I've already spoken about it a little bit in my videos for Dan Mimo. But uh, whenever I've spoken about uh, Australia Record and Elise and stuff, I love Elise. I think she's my favorite member of the Australia, Australia Familia outside of Ryu, of course. And well, I guess Australia to an extent. But she's my favorite member for a reason. I really like her character. I really like her design. And I really like her personality. I think overall, they did a brilliant job when it came to representing that in the anime. And I'm very excited to see what's to come in the coming weeks because we're going to start seeing more flashbacks. We're going to see the other members. We're going to see Kaguya. We're going to see Lyra. We're going to see other, you know, Australia familiar members and we're going to get more backstory and more flashbacks from Ryu as well. So that's going to be brilliant. So overall, well done. And it didn't, you know, the thing is, it didn't outstay its welcome. It wasn't like it was a continuous flashback. And I kind of like that they're doing that. Um, of course, it's kind of jumping back and forth a bit, and it's something that Amori did anyways in the light novel, but jumping back and forth between Ryu and Belle uh, and the party itself is well done in my personal opinion, because it could be that, you know, the flashbacks go on and on and on, and then we cut back to the Amphis Baina fight, and then, you know, cut back here. It's it, it gets a little bit stale at times, so I think, you know, making sure that we're 
consistently seeing both angles and both side uh, both POVs is very important um, but also they they need to make sure they're doing it correctly and so far it's been good but yeah let's talk about the Amphis Bena fight or uh, the end of it I should say we're all we finished off the Amphis Bena fight in this episode and I think it was well done overall. I think they did a good job overall in terms of representing it. I like the way they started uh, the, the way they started it in this episode, kind of you know kickstarting it from what they showed at the end of the last episode, right? Um, you know, the last minute or so was basically put into this episode, and then they continued on from there, which I think was a brilliant decision because it kind of lets people know what happened without you know making them go back and watch what happened in the last episode, right? Um, so I think that was well done as well. Now, obviously, I know a lot of people were curious about this point. And I saw a comment in uh, my recent video for the Should You Summon for Danmachi Memoria Freeze. I got a comment because somebody asked me, um, because they didn't explain it in the, uh, in, in the anime. But the way uh, Haruhime survived the fire is basically because of the Goliath robe. You see it getting eviscerated in the front, uh, in the front but it's basically protecting her effectively that's what it is it's nothing more than that it kind of just gives her a little bit of protection you know that's all that there is to it um i know it's a little bit confusing because they didn't specify it or explain how it works but effectively the goliath robe is what's protecting her it's why she doesn't have the robe anymore it gets eviscerated in the heat basically but that's what protects her effectively i wish they did explain that in the anime but i, I guess i mean they, they couldn't make an inner monologue or just say like oh that's how she's doing it how did she survive that that's how she's doing it i kind of like that they don't do that because that just seems very very on the nose at times but it would be nice for them to have explained it maybe later on in the episode saying like thank god the goliath bro protected you or something like that if, even if it was just an off-handed comment later on in the episode i think it would have been nice so that people know how it, how she survived outside of plot armor of course you know so i think that's something that they could have probably done better and this is applicable to all anime by the way i'm not just uh, nitpicking on danmachi but it's just something that's uh, uh, that happens in all anime either they don't explain what happened or, or happens or they, they don't explain what happens at all or they explain it in too much detail and it's very on the nose so you know it's depend it depends on which one you prefer basically i would like something that's in the middle but it's how it is. It, it is genuinely how it is. But yeah, I like the fight. Obviously, the ending of the fight was pretty much straightforward. It obviously involved a lot of teamwork and efforts, which I think was brilliant. And of course, you can see a little bit of the uh, relationships kind of obviously between Aisha and Haruhime, Mikoro and Ch Chigusa and Oka, of course, and all that jazz, obviously. And you get to see Lily being money hungry as always. You got to get that bread, bro. You got to get that bread. You got to get your bread up is what I say. But uh, yeah, the, the fight itself was good. I'm glad that we are done with the Amphis Bena fight because from now on, it's a lot of unknowns for a lot of the anime only watchers, which is going to be exciting to see. A lot of people will be curious to see what's going to be happening and stuff. Uh, because of course, the trailer only showed the Amphis Bena fight for the most part, right? We didn't get to see anything else. Of course, we saw a little bit of the Juggernaut and stuff like that, but we primarily have been keeping an eye out on the Amphis Bena when it comes to the PVs and the various trailers that we've gotten so far. So that was cool and all. But then we obviously see the group of adventurers going back up to floor 24. And uh, at the same time, obviously everything is collapsing and everything is getting, you know, uh, you know, because of the fight that happened and everything, everything is just collapsing down. And uh, Cassandra says, we need to go to floor 26. I, uh, I, uh, the, my dream is telling me we've got to go to floor 26. The cage of despair is not over. Trust me on this one. You never believe me in my dreams. Let's go down to floor 26. But obviously everybody's still in disbelief and isn't trusting Cassandra's dreams whatsoever. Um, Daphne especially is like, enough of this. Let's go back up to floor 24. I've had enough of you. Back up to t floor 24 we go. And obviously Cassandra at this, this point is now adamant, you know, in terms of... Uh, she wants to do this and this is where i i really like this uh sort of thing because i know a lot of people have been very disappointed with uh the way everybody's been treating cassandra you know cassandra's prophecy why doesn't anybody believe cassandra but you have to remember this is they're they're, they're listening to somebody who's getting dreams about something and you know more often than not it has been right but sometimes it's also been wrong so 
why would anybody continuously believe somebody because there's no evidence there's no hard proof that oh she's uh, she's prophet prophetic prophet prophetic i hope that i'm pronouncing that word right um but she can foresee the future effectively but there's no hard proof of it so obviously everybody's going to go against her even though there may have been times where it's come right the the, the problem is everybody would be very unsure about it more often than not because it could go wrong and if it goes wrong they're screwed and obviously when cassandra's telling them to go down a level to floor 26 rather than go back up it's cause for concern but obviously daphne kind of is like okay you know what i don't believe your dreams but i believe you if you're so adamant about it let's go and this is why where the title of the episode daphne loro's friend comes into play which i think is kind of nice again it kind of shows daphne's trust in cassandra even though she may not believe in the dreams she trusts cassandra to a point where if cassandra is adamant enough and i guess that's what cassandra needs to be for the future when it comes to all these prophecies and stuff but if cassandra is being very adamant about it you gotta believe her you have to believe her and you know take the right decision and of course it ended up being the right decision because the cave-in and everything dropped everybody even the adventures that were going back up to floor 24 they dropped down into the water and everything got caved in and stuff so obviously cassandra made the right decision now they can go and rescue bell and then of course we pan back to ryu and uh, bell of course again where now bell is protecting ryu ryu's taking a nap bell is on guard and it's obviously gonna get much more tasty from here on out but yeah overall this episode was great in my personal opinion i'm glad that we are away from the amphis beta to an extent because the cgi is going to be a lot better from here on out in terms of it's not going to be 3d cgi clashing against the 2d animated backgrounds and 2d uh character models and stuff so at least there's that but generally speaking i mean the fight itself was i think well handled um i was very concerned about the amphis bena fight because of the animation and quality and cgi quality primarily i would say but i'm glad that it ended up being the way it is because it's honestly not that bad and it's genuinely watchable because a lot of the times i've said this in the last episode and the previous uh the one before that as well bad cgi is very noticeable and it's really really not nice to watch but this was nice to watch so i'm very very happy that we got what we got and i'm very much looking forward to what's going to be coming up now i'm back on reddit oh big shout out to the don machi reddit r slash don machi we have the discussion page open from the light novel reader side of things so let's see what they have to say. The finale of the fight was as cool as I was hoping. All in all, the Amphis Bena fight was very well done. Seeing the small snippets of Ryu's memory were good as well, although I'm really hoping they were just teasers and they don't skip out on the full version later. I don't think they're gonna skip out on the full version later. I think, again, like I said at the start of this video, uh, they're definitely trying to make it so that it's sort of like showing smaller, smaller stuff, like you said, like this person said, teasers. Um, you know, showing a little bit of Ryu's backstory rather than giving it all at once, you know? I think that, uh, that in that regards, it'll be a little bit better rather than, you know, just dumping it all at once to, uh, to everybody. I do believe we'll get a bigger version of it. I think it won't be a full 24-minute episode of it, I don't think, at least. I think we'll get, like, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then they'll put it to the next episode and so on and so forth. I think well done. Well done. It's been well done, no complaints. Maybe the role of the Goliath robe in Haruhime's survival should have been played up a bit. Exactly, exactly. I think that's the biggest issue I have with this episode is the Goliath robe should have probably done it a little bit better, in all honesty. But yeah, they could have they, they didn't do a good job. They they could have probably done that a little bit better. Mikoto looking as awesome as described. Uh Australia Familia after those teasers is gonna be great. I don't know why, but in my imagination, I always thought she was cuddled up under the Goliath robe during her chant like a blanket. Mikoto's part though yeah Mikoto's part was beautiful absolutely well done but yeah I, I mean yeah it, it, when you read the light novel it does make it seem like she's under like she's covered herself like you know, she's put the rope on her back and she's chanting or, or she's huddled into like a cur uh, curled up into a ball basically and chanting but yeah um I think uh, they probably changed it visually as well potentially to make it suited for obviously making it look cooler and more visually impacting like uh, David JK said Well, I'm curious who you all think is the uh, MVP of the Amphis Bena fight for me I gotta go with Daphne Lily was about to shut down Daphne got Lily to focus uh, Daphne had that legendary punch to get Cassandra to start healing the group. I think Daphne was a great rally 
uh, rallier, I suppose, of the situation. But I think, like uh, this person said, I think Mikoto, I feel, is like a, um, very much uh, so the MVP of that fight. I think she's phenomenal. Um, and then, of course, you know, with the surprise gravity attack and everything, I think everybody's play played a very important role. But I think Mikoto is, of, of course, like the main dude uh main dude i see i i i guess i can call that mikoto a dude but yeah mikoto very very vital but yeah haruhime for the level boost well for the initial rally call to get everybody going again um lily with the strat strategy uka with the rage i guess we can call that we can go with that um chikusa with the uh, support daphne with the rallying you know haruhime with the level boost like i said i think all of it was very very important so yeah very much cool uh we can focus on bell and ryu yeah we'll probably start seeing more of a focus on bell and ryu rather than the uh the party members for sure um jc for the sake of making things look cool jc totally ignored the fact that the blue napalm can't be put out by regular portion of recovery mag magic and aisha just tanked that shit because she's the queen they weren't able to prop uh, Harihime uh, was okay -ish. Cassandra, let's just say uh, JC didn't love her. I think sadly not every uh, anime watcher will really understand her. I, I think people do understand her. I, I just think that of course, uh, yeah, you could argue that there would be a lot more happening there. Haruhime uh, chanting despite the... Nah, I think they did a good job with Haruhime as well. In fact, I would say the, the anime did a better job than the light novel when it came to Haruhime's chanting. Again, even in front of the heat, I would say. She's literally tanking that crap right in front of her. So, I would say that. I do agree the Aisha part could have probably been, been a bit better, but they wanted to be cooler, which is fine. I really don't care too much. Um, but yeah, I, I think, uh, you know... And this is a bit harsh, I would say. I think this is a little bit too harsh. I think Cassandra and Haruhime got their moments, and I think they did a great job as well. The mel the meltdown of Cassandra at the end of the episode to kind of be like, we need to go down to floor 26 was done well. Um, and kind of also helped Daphne's moments as well. I mean, that's the reason why the title of the uh, episode was Daphne, Loro's friend. And Haruhime's was done well as well, because let's be real, her being huddled up, in the ball or something like that wouldn't have been as impactful i think harhime's moment was sh uh, shined brighter than it did in the light novel so yeah in my personal opinion like yeah i mean the razor husky literally says it right here harhime looks so cool and confident which is a nice change in her instead of, of her usually weak like appearance i think she looked much cooler in this frame um than she did but yeah um 10 out of 10 episode my favorite this season Th that was great sure thing some things got lost but that was always gonna happen that is also true we have to remember it's a light novel to a tv series it it it's very very hard to adapt it completely unless you do like a 40 50 episode season potentially and you go after the nitty-gritty details get every inner monologue up on screen and stuff like that it's very very hard maybe 40 50 episodes is a bit of an exaggeration but you get what i mean you get what i mean um all right what an atmospheric masterpiece the season is all right so we're we're looking at anime only watchers so i want to see what they have to say um jc staff have been classed this in uh, throughout the entire uh, whole of season four yeah absolutely i'm so i'm happy i'm just happy i'm very much excited to see what their next project is we need omori sensei to stay on as a supervisor because he needs to be there um like i said i wouldn't mind a vesta movie a two-parter movie i know somebody said that it would be too long as a movie only so i wouldn't mind it being a two-parter movie uh, or maybe even three parts freaking give, give us three parts of it i don't mind that um or even sword oratoria season two as long as sword oratoria season two is done justice in comparison to season one i'll be okay with it um really proud of cassandra like see this is what i'm saying a lot of anime viewers do believe that uh cassandra is doing is much better now and you know they're showing and giving time to cassandra i feel like that guy was a little bit wrong in that regards um all right i'm not gonna click on that because i don't want to spoil it but yeah um either way i think everybody's very happy with this episode even i am extremely happy with this episode so you guys can let me know what you guys think about this episode as well down below in the comments of course um uh, and once again, thank you guys so much for watching these videos. Um, hopefully you guys are enjoying these sort of review videos and stuff like that. I'm really having fun making them and just talking about the anime and light novel and stuff. But yeah, like I said earlier on in the video, um, light novel prologue and expectations and hopes and, you know, initial predictions video is going to be coming out on Saturday. So if you are a light novel reader, 
be sure to check out that video on saturday it's gonna be sick in all honesty i'm very excited to be covering the light novel for the first time i'm not sure exactly how i want to format the video but uh we're gonna have to wait and see exactly how it goes and then of course if you want to check out the don mimo videos they're on the channel we did a should you summon earlier on for the latest unit to come out and obviously we're going to be dropping more and more content for the game as well but obviously the anime is going on right now every week i'm going to be making a review video so hopefully you enjoyed this video please be sure to leave a like if you in loved it and you liked my review and of course hit that subscribe button to be notified as to when i drop the next one of course so without further ado thank you guys so much for watching this video and i will see you guys in the next one take it easy everybody Bye bye